In a previous video, we saw that rate laws can show the relationship between reaction rates and reactant concentrations. Sometimes we may want to know the concentration of a reactant at some point in time during the reaction. This can be determined with an integrated rate law. Integrated rate laws depend on the order of a reaction, so there are three different integrated rate laws for the zero, first, and second order reactions. By now, you should recognize the form of a first order rate law as rate equals K times the concentration of A. In order to get the first order integrated rate law, we need to do a little calculus. By doing this, the first order rate law, rate equals K concentration of A, becomes the natural log of A at time T is equal to negative KT plus the natural log of A at time zero. The T is the time and the concentration of A subscript zero is the initial concentration. Now, if you kind of squint your eyes and tilt your head to the left, you might say that this equation looks like the line for an equation, y equals mx plus b. In this case, the y value is the natural log of the concentration of A, the x values would be the time t, and the slope of the line would be the negative rate constant, negative k. The y-intercept would be the natural log of the concentration of A at time zero. If we use the equation in this form, we can make a graph of the natural log of A versus time, and if the reaction is first order with respect to the concentration of A, we should see a straight line. You should know that the second order rate law takes the form of rate equals K times the concentration of A squared. If we do a little calculus on the second order rate law, we would get the second order integrated rate law. This takes the form of the reciprocal of the concentration of A at time T is equal to K times T plus the reciprocal of the concentration of A. This integrated rate law looks a lot like Y equals MX plus B. This means that we can make a graph with the reciprocal of the concentrations on the Y axis and the time on the T axis. In this case, the slope is a positive K. If we make this graph of the reciprocal of concentration versus time, and the reaction is second order in the reactant A, we'll see a straight line for this graph. We've also talked about zero order rate laws. These have the form of the rate equals the rate constant K. If we do some calculus on the zero order rate law, we get the zero order integrated rate law, which takes the form concentration of A at time T equals negative kt plus the concentration of A at time zero. This again looks like y equals mx plus b, which means we can make a graph of concentration versus time. And the slope of this line is the negative rate constant. If we graph concentration versus time and it produces a straight line, we would know that a particular reaction was zero order with respect to the concentration of A. This table summarizes what we know about zero, first order, and second order rate laws. It includes the rate laws, the units for the rate constant, the integrated rate laws, and the straight line plots for each of these different order reactions. By now, you should be able to differentiate between rate laws and integrated rate laws. You should also be able to explain what each different type of rate law shows a relationship for. Finally, you should be able to differentiate between zero order, first order, and second order integrated rate laws.